め永久に終わらせる助けたブリーチブレイブソウルズ Alrighty, what is going on, you guys? This is your boy, the Death Smasher, and welcome back to yet another Bleach Brave Souls video. And today we are back again with yet another top 10 character list. And this time we're gonna be tackling the technique attribute, which, by the way, before we begin, shout outs to you guys for allowing that top 10 speed video to get pretty much a good amount of views. Without that, I don't think I would have chosen to continue this series. So, with that, I basically would like to say a big thank you to you guys. Let's just keep the positive vibes going, get to AK subs, and get to it but now let us go ahead and begin the actual video but before we tackle the top 10 technique characters i figure we should highlight some honorable mentions and my pick for the honorable mentions have to pretty much be fierce battle renji arena okiora and abirama now i'm not really gonna break them down too much but the fierce battle renji now the killer is pretty meh for pve content still useful in guild quests however the main thing that you guys need to take note of is the fact that he has a lot of multipliers and also has the bankai button like the thousand year blood war captain rukia so he's got berserker of 40 the technique soul reaper strong attack damage of 20 full stam of 30 via the soul trait has laceration on his entire kit Frenzy plus one, guard break, and even has cooldown reduction thanks to the actual skills alone. He also does come with paralysis immunity and also has a 10 second disabler upon transforming with sprint plus one. Just really good. The only bad thing about this character is the fact that he lacks havoc. Honestly, if he had havoc, I definitely would have put him directly into the top 10 list of characters that we have for technique. However, that's not the case. So,、uh, moving on, pretty much Arena Okiora. Now, this character is really good. That being said, he just lacks a lot of things, such as, you know, better kit, no guard break, and、uh, he has a delayed activation time on that third strong attack. But that being said, he does hit decently hard, has Soul Reaper Killer with a Berserker of 40% and a strong attack damage of 20. Has recharge, and of course, he does have havoc. That being said, with Okiora, I forgot to mention that he has also 50% dodge soul reaper damage and also has a chance to inflict weakening for every five seconds since it is a map wide skill. So, his skills is pretty good. Gameplay, on the other hand, not the greatest, which is a bit unfortunate. And then lastly, we have Abirama. Now, this character is a really strong technique nad character that we have. In the game, he has guard break with a flurry bruiser of 60%, a normal attack damage of 30%, and an extra 20% normal attack damage that he gives out to himself and all other Technique or Rock Guards. He's mainly a GQ character to be used. The main drawback with this character is that he pretty much lacks status o m e n so you're not really going to be using him too much for autoing IT unless at 5 5, but he still is a pretty good character to make it into the honorable mentions. So he is immune to weakening, so. Exactly what you would want to have from this character since you're mainly going to be using him in guild quests. So, I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm 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 going to be able to do it. A bit better multipliers, if I have to be honest. Frenzy plus one, Havoc at 20%, Berserker of 40%, with a full stam of 20%. He does have recharge time with a Ronker Killer, and he also has Long Tried and Poise, so he's gonna be zooming across the battlefield and cannot be staggered. And he also has Drain on his entire kit, which is actually pretty nice. However, because in Inheritance Trials, this is a status element that gets cucked quite frequently, you're almost not gonna be able to. To use that status element unless they are not immune to drain. That being said, he does have dodge or ronker damage, sprint plus one, and also has weakened immunity. So, a really good set of skills. He does have the 3k length beam on his SA1. SA2 is gonna be the shockwave attack, and then the third strong attack is full screen. So, yeah, other than that, really damn good hit. Just that he is lacking the guard break and could have used another status element to accompany the drain. But other than that, this guy is a very solid option regardless. So I put him at number 10 for a reason, so let's keep him there. Now, coming in at number 9.
I have to give it to the Machine Society version of Nemu. Now, this character hits a bit less harder compared to the Arena Tsukishima, however, her kit is a bit more consistent since she basically has a similar kit, the only difference is that she has the 960 in front and has a charge SA3. She does have a Berserker of 20% with the Technique Attribute Soul Reaper Strong Attack Damage of 20% and also has Frenzy with Havoc of 20% and also has a Disabler against Speed Hollows. Now, that being said, there are some Inheritance Trials which Nemu can get cucked over with the fact that some of them will even have Paralysis Immunity. In this case, unfortunately, she's not really going to be used too much and will pretty much suffer the same fate as Tsukishima. The only difference is that this character just has a better killer. That being said, the only innate ability that she has here is Freeze Immunity. So, yeah, number 9. I think that's the right position for her. But now let's move on to the next character of the list. Coming in at number 8 is the Christmas version of Orihime, which is by far a very valuable character to have in your account for when it comes to farming in general. You're going to be using her in Epic Raids, you're going to be using her in Inheritance Zone. That being said, she has an Oronker Killer. Really nice, very good. And she also does come armed with her own set of abilities, such as having Frenzy plus one, a Berserker of 40% can heal on her second strong attack, she has Medic, and she's also able to provide barriers. And thanks to her multi-barrier plus two skills, she can basically give herself five shields while your other allies gets three shields, which is very good. And the most important thing to top off is the fact that she is a speed Link Slot Potion character, meaning that you're going to be able to get a lot and a lot and a lot of speed Link Slot Potions. Now, that being said, she is lacking in the damage factor because she only has 40% Berserker as a whole. However, as a supporting character, she is just really good because of the fact that she can heal. Heck, even in PV content, she even has 20% stamina recovery. She can pretty much read a Ronkar dodges and also has Spare plus one. I don't think there's anything too wrong with this character. She also has a good kit. She has a shotgun blast on the SA1. The second strong attack is the 960 in front, and then the third strong attack is full screen. Granted, she does have the same problem as Arena Tsukishima and Nemu, whereas she doesn't have guard break. But realistically speaking, this character is not really meant to do damage and is just mainly meant to be a very good supporting character for the technique attribute as a whole for when it comes to farming. So other than that, really good character. And coming in at number seven. <laughs> Would you look at that? We already have ourselves yet another Link Slot Potion character, and this time it is going to be the Cacao Society Grim Jow. Now, this character is basically going to be the better options to use for technique because he does have a beam on the SA1, the suction vortex on the SA2, and then the SA3 is basically the same as Machine Society Nemu full screen in front and uh, basically he's going to be the stronger Lang slot potion character that we have for the technique attribute but on top of that can also farm super pots so you're going to be able to get your hands on a good amount of speed super pots to basically get your speed characters to t20 and that being said this character is even stronger than orihime because he has frenzy plus two havoc at 20 percent he even has extra 20% damage to himself and all other Technique Aronkors that are in the actual party, has the same killer as Orihime, weakening, and on top of that, he does also have Guard Break, meaning that he's going to be able to penetrate through Melee Guard, he's not going to get any of his damage diminished, and can pretty much do an additional damage to weaken enemies of 20% and is immune to weakening. And uh, yeah, overall, really solid character. That being said, because this character is a super pot character, he is lacking a means of being able to, you know, increase the possibility of inflicting weakening to all speed mobs, which is pretty much the only drawback that this character has. But other than that, really solid character for epic raids, really good for inheritance trials. And you're going to be able to use him in just about every single content for when it comes to farming. Now, up next at number six. <laughs> I have to give it to Roka. Now, this is a character that I did trash on a lot upon coming out, but then I pretty much showcased her. My mind did change, and I have to say, the skills are really good. She hits hard. However, she's really let down by the kit, which is pretty much why I'm going to place her at number six and nowhere near lower. She's not hitting the top five. 
and uh, she's not leaving the top 10. So that's basically the best place I can put her in. She's going to be a holo killer. She's got a crazy set of skills because she has Frenzy plus one with a Berserker of 40% accompanied with Havoc at 20%. She even has Sharpshooter. So she's on top of having Guard Break implemented, also being able to nullify ranged resistance. So you can use her just fine for both manual playing and autoing extreme co-op just like that. And on top of that, Sperm plus two and the status ailment spiritual pressure boost of 80% weakening on her entire kit and she also can revive on the soul bomb and this is really good because when you have weakening with the sp boost of 80% and a devastation of 40% with this character if you guys do get her 5-5 you can potentially nuke out melee and ranged holo gq and potentially get sub 1 given that you have her max transcended 5-5 t20 and of course you have other good 5-5 side units to use for those respective guild quests. The reason why I say this is because I know a good amount of guildmates of mine that have managed to get sub-1 with Spirits Are Forever with Yu Yoruichi, who pretty much happens to have the same Soul Bomb as Roka in this case, so uh, yeah. Oh, what about the innate abilities? Let's just take a look at what she has. The innate abilities are really good because she has 40% strong attack damage when at full stam, 20% stamina recovery, and long trade, so... Yeah, really, really great amount of multipliers, but the kit is pretty much, you know, dog water because she has the 18% shave on her SA1, and the SA2 is just the homing vortex. No 960, no 750, just the homing vortex, which is good for getting status elements in. However, you're not going to be consistently killing with this character, which is a bit unfortunate, so you want to at least get her 2 5. At 1 5, she's kind of eh. Realistically speaking, she's going to be like a Christmas Noel in that kind of regard, but without the increased status element chance, etc, etc. And of course, no bombardment, but honestly, that's kind of irrelevant. And uh, yeah, I just think that this character is okay. Nothing too crazy. She's good, but I don't think uh, she's, uh, you know, top five best technique characters that we have in the game. So I think six is probably a really good placement for her. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree, because at the end of the day, this is just, you know, all opinion based. But now let's move on to number five. At number five, I have to give it to Art Book Ichigo. Now, I know Art Book Ichigo is not going to be able to have the same damage multipliers as Roka because this guy is missing 80% SP boost. He also does not have shared complete status immunity. But that being said, the reason why I put him at number five over Roka is just literally because of the amount of value that this guy can pretty much provide and the fact that he has double killers. Roka only has holo killer, while Ichigo has Soul Reaper and no affiliation killer. That being said, in my opinion, I do find this character to be significantly more valuable than Roka as a whole. And uh, in terms of the Soul Bomb, I do want to say it's pretty much up there, if not slightly better, slightly worse. It really depends because of the simple matter of fact that this guy has Bombardment with Weakening on all of his strong attacks. Now, if you do get this character 5-5, you can nuke out both GQs for Soul Reapers and no affiliations and potentially get sub-1, given that you have him at max transcended T20 and you have good side units. But that being said, the skills, he does have Frenzy plus 1 with Berserker of 60%, Havoc at 20% Marauder, meaning that he has Guard Break plus Nullify Melee Resistance. And he also has Poise, meaning that this guy cannot get staggered when playing as this character. And the innate abilities are also pretty good. He does have all status immunity. It's not shared like Roka, but it's still pretty good. And also has Long Shride and Sperm Plus 2. So he's pretty much going to be speedy just like Roka. And this guy already has a way better kit than her because... He does have the Suction Vortex on the SA1, 960 in front on the SA2, and then the third Strong Attack is full screen. So yeah, better kit. But that being said, in terms of the damage that this guy can dish out, unfortunately, it's not as hard as Roka in this case. But other than that, let's move on to number four of the list. <laughs> Number four, I have to give it to Thousand Year Blower Eisen because this guy is the Nad King. Literally, numero uno best Nad units that we have in the game. And if this were a top 10 Nad character list, I would easily put this guy at number one. But because we're mainly talking about all the tech units that we have 
for PvE, I feel like at number 4 is pretty much the perfect placement for him because of the simple matter of fact that you can use this guy in just about any inheritance trial and be able to get through it just fine. The only difference is that he's not going to be a really fast unit because he's a nat character. However, he's just really good because he's going to be able to survive. He's going to be able to manual play. He's just basically going to be able to do everything that you would expect him to do because Flurry plus one. He's got a bruiser of 40%, plus the normal attack damage of 20%. He's got a ronker killer, has the gauge mechanic, just like 7th Anniversary Uryu. So once you get that filled up, you basically have 100% extra bruiser for 10 seconds. And you also have a bit of damage reduction for 10 seconds. But that's not all. He can boost on his second Tron attack and also give out barriers. And because of the multi-barrier skills, he's going to be able to give out 5 shields to himself and to his other allies 3 and also has status element attack boost of 80% upon inflicting a status element, overall rounding up your total attack by 80%, basically. It's pretty self-explanatory. And also has increased status element chance against speed attribute enemies. So he's gonna be able to inflict weakening with ease against any type of speed mob. And nothing is gonna stop him unless we get an IT where enemies are immune to weakening. But so far, we don't have one, so for now, we're completely safe. And on top of that, he even has guard break, so he's going to be able to completely ignore range guard and also has hit hidden enemy. So on top of that, this guy pretty much has a built-in Zeta pill, so you can just go with a complete golden chappy chappy bait at all times when it comes to playing as this character, and you don't even have to give him a Zeta pill. And the innate abilities, <laughs> he's able to pretty much read all affiliation dodges, making this character a very valuable character for sync common quests in which there are dodge floors. And he's also immune to burn and also has burn plus one. And the naturing is pretty much unique because his first three hits are pretty much range collision. And then the last one pretty much becomes a Lele Bado Nat String for that final hit alone, which is, in my opinion, really good. It's very interesting as an actual attack, and I figure the strong attacks, you guys don't really need to know much, but like, he's got the Shotgun Blast on SA1, SA3 is gonna be the Suction into Explosion, which is really good for inflicting status elements, and then the second strong attack is gonna be the 800 in front. So other than that, Fantastic character, easily one of the best Nat characters in the game. I would put him higher, however, these three characters that we have above, in my opinion, just, you know, do a lot more justice. So, let's just go ahead and get right into it. At number three, I have to give it to the Thousand Year Blower anime version of Uryu. Now, this character, I'll say that much, he's not hitting as hard as the likes of Artbook Ichigo. He's not nuking as hard as Artbook Ichigo, nor is he hitting as hard as Roka. However, there's just one thing that you guys really need to take into consideration here. So for starters, he's got double killers, just like Artbook. He has Soul Reaper and Captain Killer, so you're gonna be able to use him in three different types of GQs, being Range Soul Reaper and Melee and Range Cap, because by the way, Captain GQ does not have any ways of being able to lock in characters and have melee range resistance. So yeah. Secondly, this guy has Pierce Iron Skin, meaning that uh, the amount of damage reduction that the enemies have in Inheritance Trials, you're just gonna be able to ignore it with any type of attack that you do with this character because he doesn't have status elements. As a matter of fact, he doesn't even need status elements be because of the actual skill alone, which is crazy to even think about. Realistically speaking. Now that being said, he has Frenzy plus one. A Berserker of 60%. Full stamina damage boost of 20%. And then the technique attribute character strong attack damage of 20%. Okay, I lied. He hits harder than Artbook Ichigo. I'll say that much. <laughs> I actually lied about that, but he's not hitting as hard as Roka. That's pretty much a given fact in terms of what she can do. And uh, Bombardment, that being said, the Soul Bomb, don't expect it to do anything too crazy because it's nowhere near the same as Artbook or Roka, he doesn't have weakening, so you're not going to be able to do sub 1 with him. However, it still is a decent soul bomb at the end of the day. And the main thing that sets him on a high place compared to the other characters is because of the fact that he is by far the ultimate farmer for Technique. Because this guy is able to farm both Droplets, has a 30% drop rate, has the Speed Link Slot Potion skill of plus 5, and also has the Super Link Slot Potion skill of 
plus five. So this character, you'd want to have him. Whether you get him duped out or not, even at one of five, he's gonna be your go-to character to use for basically every content in the game. In Inheritance Trials at one of five, he's gonna be able to cleave through. In Droplet Zone, he's gonna be good. In Epic Raids, he's gonna be good. In Inheritance Zone, he's also gonna be really good. This is just a character that you do absolutely need to have for your account. So whenever you guys see this character come back with Thousand Year Blower anime Ichigo, this is a character that you want to get, that you must summon for very, very easily. And guess what? On his innate abilities, he also has Havoc, Spring Plus One, and also has Team Party Stamina Recovery of 20%. So he has a means of being able to get his stamina back even if you lose it. It works because he also has full stam at 20% on the 6 earth skill, so... Yeah, that being said, the kit isn't really too phenomenal because he has the 750 AoE in front, which, by the way, is a really good strong attack. SA2 sadly is the homing vortex only, just like Roka, only the homing vortex and then the third strong attack is full screen. Other than that really damn good valuable character, the only drawbacks that this guy has is, you know, no complete status immunity, no long stride, no sharpshooter. But that's just about it, but I put him at number 3 for a good reason and that's the reason why, because this guy is just able to tackle on so much content, it's not even a joke. So uh, yeah. Coming in at number two, here is who I have placed. <laughs> now at number two, I know this is a bit of a controversial pick, but I feel like this pretty much needs to be said, and it's the Spirits Are Forever With You version of Retsu. Now, in my opinion, for technique, she is either going to be the third or the second hardest hitting character that we have for technique. Now, she doesn't hit per se as hard as Roka on the SA3. That's pretty much a given fact, but like, the thing is, this character has a much better kit, and it's just gonna be a lot more suitable for when it comes to clearing out the harder content that we have in the game. Like, let's just take a look at everything else. For starters, she has Frenzy Plus 2, which is already gonna be really, really damn insane. She's gonna be able to hit just as hard as the 6th Anniversary Aizen in this case. She has a Berserker of 20% and also a full stamina damage boost of 20%. So already, the fact that she comes armed with Frenzy Plus 2 with extra multipliers, that is something that you absolutely want to see. She has Drain and Weakening on her entire kit, which is fabulous. And she also has a third strong attack that is a chargeable one. And on top of that, the thing that this character has compared to most Technique characters is the fact that she has by far the fastest cooldowns yet to pretty much exist for her because once you basically pop that SA1 and you have like per se triple 14% links, it's only gonna take around four to three seconds to get that SA1 back. To give you guys a really good example, SA2 around eight to seven seconds. It's just the SA3 that is gonna be taking a bit longer because it's a healing strong attack, but that's just about it. And like, let's take a look at everything else. She also has weakened defense on her Soul Bomb with a devastation of 40%. Now, remember, I pretty much talked about this in the top 10 list of the speed characters. Swimsuit Retsu is able to do sub 1 in her respective GQs. This character can pretty much do the exact same thing because apply the double weakened defense upon getting her to T20 alongside full stamina damage boost, you can actually nuke out both the melee and ranged versions of Polo which is really, 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 really good. And uh, <laughs> the innate abilities, she has Medic, Sperm Plus One, and Reduced Strong Attack cooldown of 6%. So yeah, she's got a way faster cooldown on her kit. And uh, she has a beam on the SA1. The SA2 is gonna be the Vortex into pushback kind of attack. Really damn high chance of being able to inflict status elements even more with the fact that she has Frenzy Plus Two. And then the SA3 is, you know, the same SA3 as Machine Society Nemo. So yeah, I put her at number two because of the fact that she can pretty much do a lot of stuff. The only flaws that, in my opinion, this character has is just lacking the 80% SP boost and lacking complete status immunity like Roka and Art Book Ichigo. But in my opinion, the amount of high cooldowns that this character has, the very damn good consistent kit that she offers, in my opinion, is just gonna go a really, really long way for this character. And she can still nuke just fine 
for both the GQ. So other than that, really fantastic character. I just value her a bit higher compared to most of the tech characters that we have in the list. But anyways, let me know if you guys agree or disagree. We can talk about it in the comment section. But now at number one, I think this is pretty much the most obvious choice, but. <laughs> It goes to the Spirits Are Forever With You version of Toshiro, the Beyond Bankai version. And this guy is basically 7th Anniversary Uryu, but for Technique, in this case. He has double killers of Soul Reaper and Squad Zero. In my opinion, Squad Zero is pretty much a completely wasted killer because of the fact that you're only going to use that in Sinkamon. And uh, for when it comes to most PvE content, you're never going to see Squad Zeros at all. And for GQ, uh, we have Yama. That's all I can really say about this character. So, uh, yeah, going into the stuff that this guy has, he is basically like 7th Anniversary Uryu in terms of the multipliers. For sure, he has the gauge mechanic like 7th Anniversary Uryu, where upon fully getting it charged up and activated, you gain 100% Berserker, you also gain 50% damage reduction, but on top of that, you're going to be able to get the cooldowns back a bit more faster. And also, he can heal himself up by 30% of his HP, which is really, really good. And on top of that, he's got Frenzy plus one with a Berserker of 40%, has shared complete status immunity, status ailment spiritual pressure boost of 80%, and he still keeps the Bombardment. So other than that, the ultimate all-rounder for technique of truly a offensive menace at that and that's not all that's not all on his innate abilities guess what he has full stamina damage boost of 20 percent and increased strong attack damage of 40 percent when at full stam alongside sperm plus two he is by far the strongest technique character that we have in the game and he is fantastic he plays exactly like uryu his skills are similar to that of uryu which is really 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 damn insane Look at this kid, it's the same as him, literally the same. Beam on first, SA2 being a lunge, which is full screen, and then the third is full screen. You cannot go wrong with this character, like at 1 of 5 you're just going to be able to shred through every single inheritance trials, regardless of having killer or not. Now that being said, there is just one thing I need to pretty much talk about. This character can get replaced within a matter of months, and that's if they make the next Spirits are forever with you character, another technique unit, and if they decide to completely copy and paste the stuff and give them weakening, in this case. Basically what I'm trying to say is, sadly, he is not going to be able to do sub 1 in GQ like most of the tech characters that I've listed before, just because of the fact that this guy lacks weakening, he's not going to be able to take away the defense that the bosses have in GQ, so uh, yeah, that is the really bad thing about this character. So his Soul Bomb is not going to be hitting as hard as Art Book, not as hard as Roka, and definitely not as hard as Spirits Are Forever With You Retsu, which is a bit of a shame in this case. Just to give you guys an idea, he has basically the same Soul Bomb as Azashiro in this case. Only difference is Toshiro has full stam at 20%, so theoretically speaking, it's going to hit slightly harder than Azashiro, but he's not going to be able to do sub 1 just like Azashiro in this case. So uh, yeah, there is room for improvement for when we get another new tech character. However, I think I can say without a doubt that this is by far the best technique character that we have in the game very easily. Just the fact that he has the high multipliers, even having Marauder of being able to nullify melee resistances and having guard break. 80% SP boost with the gauge mechanic. There's just nothing to go wrong about this character besides the Soul Bomb. He's even immune to everything. He can heal, bro. Like, easily one of the best technique characters that we have in the game and is absolutely a must have. If you guys have gotten this character and have gotten the special move source from the New Year's point event, I think it's worth using on him just fine, even to just get him two out of five, because that's how hard this character hits. He hits harder than 7th Anniversary Uri. That's pretty much a guaranteed fact right here. So yeah, that basically ends the list of the top 10 Technic characters that we have in the game. Now, do you guys agree or disagree? Let me know in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing another one soon, and I think I'm probably going to do it on either Heart or Power. I'll just have to see about that when the time comes. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you guys have actually enjoyed this video, 
don't forget to smash that like button, share this video with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already, and hit the bell notification so that way you guys are up to date with my most recent videos. This has been your boy The Dash Master, and I hope to see you guys all in the next one. Take care lads, peace out.